Hey guys, this is Tim Gunter with Gunter Welding and Fabrication in Dixon, Tennessee. I'm a former welding instructor, and today we're gonna to talk about how to pass 3F. It's been about two years since my last video, but we had a lot happen. Uh, I started a business, it's, it did really well. So I actually have some videos coming up about that too. When I was teaching, I noticed there were three main problems that people have. I'm gonna give you two solutions for each problem, and that should help you pass it. So we're doing 3F, 7018, we're using 332nd rod, uh, we're gonna weld between 90 and 95 amps. All right, so the first issue that I always noticed my students having was as they're going up the plate, they're undercutting the plates really hard. And the reason for that, I think, is because, first of all, they're holding too far away from the, the plates themselves. There's gonna be two things that we need to do. First of all, hold a nice tight arc length. Um, and then as you're going up the plate, we're gonna do like a really small little side-to-side -side motion. Just really slight little movements and we're holding on the sides. And the reason why we're holding on the sides as we go up this plate is we want the puddle to fill wherever that arc cuts. And if you don't hold long enough, it'll cut in real bad. As, as you, if you were to move real fast or do these big crazy movements, you're just gonna cut into that plate. So you gotta go just slow enough for that puddle to catch up. You're gonna come in straight on it like that and you're gonna basically split the end of that rod right on that corner right there. And then you move side to side up the plate to where it's evenly filling on both sides of the plate. The reason why I'm suggesting you go side to side like this is it gives you a rhythm, a sense of uh, how fast you're moving up the plate where you're not just kind of getting lost in the weld. See how the slack popped off? That means travel speed's correct. All right, so let's talk about tie-ins. We ran our last rod all the way down. It's time to start a new rod. So we're gonna come up about an inch from where our crater was from our last bead. We're gonna strike, keep everything really tight because you don't wanna like strike really high and then arc off all over the, the plate. So keep it really tight, about an inch up, strike it, come down, you're gonna trace the crater. All right, that's the crater right there. You're gonna bring your rod down and you're gonna just trace the outer edge of the, your crater. Pause for just a second and then start weaving again. All right, so about an inch up, strike, get really tight, come down, trace, pause for just a second and then start going back and forth. So this brings us to our second problem. So as I was going up, when I got to about right here or so, it started to get really hot. All right, so what people wanna do is it starts getting hot, starts getting hard to control, and people kind of panic and they pull their rod out. And when you pull your rod away from the metal, there's the electrical resistance increases right there, the amperage spikes, and then it makes the problem even worse. So then your weld starts to droop, you start cutting in on the sides. So a really easy solution to that is just push that rod in tighter. So hold your, your rod really tight and keep working, working the metal like that. Whatever you do, do not pull away. The other solution to this is uh, to keep your inner pass temperature down. So basically what the, what the temperature of the plate is between each pass that you're doing. It's called the inner pass temperature. So we've run one bead now. It's already starting to get hot towards the top of the plate. The heat's rising through the plate as you're welding. About from here up, gets really hot. Now we need to let it cool. Take a break, you know, bigger drink of water, whatever it is, let your plate cool down. It's super important. Now, if you don't have time to do that, turn your amperage down a little bit. So if you're running, say I'm about 95 amps right now, I could turn it down to like 92, 90 to 92 amps. Now that the plate's hotter, it'll still be like I'm welding at 95 amps, but it'll be easier to control. All right, now we're gonna talk about how to place the second bead, etc. It's really important that you create even legs. So right here, this is the leg of that side of the weld. This will be the other leg. So if you lay all these beads in correctly, this will be the same amount on that side as it is on this side. So we're going to talk about how you stack these beads in here to where everything comes out evenly. This right here is called the toe of the weld. You got a toe on this side and you got a toe on that side. Picture the center of this rod kind of going along an imaginary line across this, this toe of the weld right here. So now instead of being over here centered, now I'm centered on the toe of bead number one. So another little tip for you guys who are learning, take some soapstone, run it down the toe of your weld, all right? And that will be easier for you to see it, it'll like highlight it while you're welding. Basically, you're gonna do the same movement, just very, very slight, back and forth, 
kind of like a crescent shape across this toe of the weld right there. That's how I do it. Give you some rhythm. It also helps kind of spread the metal out evenly, kind of kind of fighting gravity a little bit. Because if you just run it straight up, sometimes it can start to hump. If you're going too slow. All right, so our first bead, we kept it kind of in the center of these two plates. The second bead, we were talking about how to, how to center everything on the toe of the first bead. Now the third bead is different. We cover bead number one. We tie into bead number two, about halfway overlapping onto bead number two, but also tying in to the base plate over here. Now we put our rod center on the toe of two. All right, we tie into the plate, we tie into two. And now we gotta make sure we tie in that plate. We overlap bead number one and we tie into bead number two, and it's kind of looping it all together in a way. And then we're still gonna do the same motion, that we're gonna hold on top of the second bead, just like we were doing on the plate. So it'll look like holding here, whipping across, holding here, holding here, holding here. And we're just making sure that the arc doesn't just cut, but we're going just slow enough to where the puddle's filling wherever we're cutting as we move. And number four, we're gonna cover up two completely. We're gonna tie into the this plate, and then we're gonna just kind of like sort of come up on three. All right, so we're covering up two. Same concept. All right, we got the toe of the weld. So if you want to take your soapstone and run it down there, that's fine. That's the toe of bead number two, and we're gonna basically make that our center point. Overlap two and go into three. We're basically covering up bead number two now. Tie into the plate. Tie into bead number three, tie into the plate, tie into bead number three, and we're covering up bead number two. And I did this to show you what, what it looks like when you do this incorrectly. This is tying in the right way. This is tying in the wrong way. A little uh, crater right there on accident. When I tied it in, I didn't hold enough, so I, I came down, I looped around, I didn't hold enough on that side. I just went, immediately whipped over to here. Instead of coming over onto bead number three like I was supposed to, I was holding too much on this side. Now, if you see the difference between here and here, this is tying in the right way. This is tying in the wrong way. All right, and if we're not careful on the next bead, we're gonna have a problem. It's not gonna be the end of the world. Our next bead is gonna cover all that up, but we just need to make sure when we get to this point that we tie into that bead three and bead number four. We need to make sure that we bridge that gap. So we'll slow down just a little bit. So I'll, we'll be coming up the plate, but when we get to this point right here, we need to make sure we slow down just a tiny bit to fill that in. When you start layering over a problem like that, if you don't, if you don't fix it, it'll show itself on the next bead. We wanna make sure that everything looks really even. All right, now five, we're making the center right here. We're gonna tie into four, we're gonna tie into three. Now, we're kind of bridging the gap between three and four to create bead number five. So if you notice while I was welding, when I got to this point, I slowed down and I made sure that it filled in so that everything looks uniform. So I did, I slowed down quite a bit actually to fill it in. And if, you, and if you hadn't slowed down, you would have been able to tell that was there. Another thing you're probably noticing that I'm doing is that when I get up in here towards the top, I get to here and then I come up over the top of the plate and then I come back to fill it in. So what I'm doing is I'm coming up, I'm coming up over the top and then I'm coming back to make sure that fills in. Because if you don't do that, you start getting this huge divot right here where the weld's not filling in. And it's just keeping everything nice and even through here. Bead number six, basically we're covering up three completely. We're tying into five, and then we're tying into the base plate on this side. All right, so this is the finished product. We've got six beads in here. We kept the legs even, so if you look down, plate, we've got an even amount of weld on this side, an even amount of weld on that side. And we did that consistently through the whole thing. We've got an even amount of weld here compared to here. So if you found this video helpful and you're interested in working for yourself, I got some really exciting stuff coming in the background that I'm working on. If you click the link below in the description, 
I'll take you to my website that'll get you started on this journey learning how to become a six-figure welder from home like I did. And that'll also put you on a list to be notified for when my big project comes out soon. So click that link. Thanks, guys.